Hi, it's Eric from Axis. Today we're going to talk about machining this cool little rotary part with my Haas UMC 750 using the Curve 5 Axis wireframe toolpath. To get started, in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go out and create even more wireframes. So we're going to select wireframe line closest and line normal along a chain. We're going to be prompted to select the surface solid face or mesh. We'll select that, end it, then we're going to come in and we're going to select the piece of wireframe that we want to run the cutter along. Mastercam is going to go out and create lines normal to that curve, taking into account the surface that we selected first. Now, into the toolpath. So we're going to say toolpath, curve 5 axis. We're going to do this with a 3 8 ball nose end mill that I've pre-selected. We will set our speeds and feeds. And in my case, I also like to select the plunge rate. While I'm here, I'm going to make sure my length offset and my diameter offset match my tool number. And we're going to move into the holder next. I have an overhang length for that end mill set at an inch and an eighth. The curve type, in this case, because we said we were going to use wireframe is going to be set to 3D curve, so we'll go out and select that curve. Green check that. We're going to turn off our comp because we want to rough this part. and We'll send the cutter straight down that particular curve. While I'm here, I'm going to check my cut tolerance. We're going to move down to our tool axis control, and we're going to take a look. Now, in our tool axis control box, we have several different ways we could do this cutter path. But because I said that we were going to actually use wireframe, we're going to stick to lines. We'll select the arrow. And now we're going to go out and select the 10 lines that we just created individually inside a master cam, taking care to make sure that the arrow starts and ends the same way on all 10 of these lines. Rotate the part around to get to the last three. Once we get that done, we're going to hit the green check. That selection process is over. We're going to move down now to our linking parameters. Inside of our linking parameters, I'm just going to use my clearance coming and going, and I'll leave everything else the same. We'll move on to entry motion because I want to start off of the part and end off of the part. So by selecting entry curve and exit curve, I'm just going to add a number of 375 in the length. I'm going to go into depth cuts. I'm going to choose to run 10 depth cuts, a couple of finish cuts. And we're going to calculate the cutter path here. Takes a second. And there's our tool path. As you can see, I started off the part and finished off the part. I don't have my rapids turned on, visually of my rapids anyway. We'll go into our levels. We're going to turn off those lines that we created, and we're going to go into our verify now and see how this all works out. So once I get into my verify, you're going to see that I already have my vice loaded. So we can collision check against the vice inside of verify. We'll hit play. There's the cutter doing what it needs to do, starting on the part or off the part and finishing off the part. Rapiding back, I'm cutting one way. I could certainly zigzag this if I wanted to. I just choose not to in this case. And once it's done, looks like it did everything that I wanted it to do. Nice and clean. Come back. Again, we'll take a brief little look here. Again, the cutter starts off the part, finishes off the part, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Thank you.